it's been part of my family and my DNA since I was born, I really do miss it. And I think I just had to accept that career I had is on hold. These two pilots spent 62 years between them flying jetliners around the globe for Qantas. But seven months ago, the high flyers came down to earth in a hurry. And now they're driving buses instead of air buses. You flew the last Qantas A380 back from London. Yeah. How was that? It was a very strange experience. And to sit there knowing that this may be the last time you ever fly this aeroplane again is uh, quite emotional, really. Bringing in the, the first A380 into Sydney in September 12 years ago, but who's counting? That was an absolute highlight. You know, I won't sleep for days, I don't think it's just, I'm still on such a high. My father was a, a Qantas captain. He bought the first 747 in back in 1970-something. The one with the biggest first-class lounge in the skies, with 15 washrooms and separate shaver bars. My mum was a hostess. My wife was a flight attendant as well. My sister was a flight attendant, so I am sort of had no option to get into aviation for my career. So what's your relationship with Qantas at the moment? Uh, I'm stood down. Uh, all the 380 crews uh, are stood down. So we're sitting back and just waiting for the phone, phone to ring. And the phone did ring, but not for the most joyous of occasions. Both Peters were asked to fly Qantas A380s into California's Mojave Desert, where the fleet has been mothballed indefinitely. It's a really surreal experience to arrive at an airport that's pretty well full with derelict aeroplanes. Is it emotional leaving the planes behind? Yeah. I think, um, excuse me. <sighs> Going to the Mojave was... <sighs> probably one of the most difficult things. You know, taking that first aircraft that I delivered to the desert, and it'll probably stay there. He won't come back. We all cried. Now there's 10 380s parked in Victorville, parked on the dirt, the tumbling tumbleweeds being blown by the wind. Then you pan away from our 10 aircraft and there's seven or 800 aeroplanes. An old FedEx and old United Airlines aeroplanes that'll never fly again. It's, it's a very depressing place to go if you're in my situation. Very sad. Well, we're hopeful that some of these aeroplanes will come back. It's, but it's not a guarantee. So, Peter, how's the first week driving the bus going? It's been pretty good so far. Uh, it's only been a day, so it's not really even a week. <laughs> See you later. Welcome, mate. I like to have a purpose. Um, I also like to l learn new things, and I've always enjoyed driving. The uh, end result being here at Forest of Terry Hills. How have you found people on the road? Uh, some of them are really, really courteous and you put your blinker on and they'll stop and they'll give you the room and I give them a wave and say thank you very much but there are the others who need to get in front of the bus <laughs> and that's their priority in life. Well, how does it differ to flying an Airbus? Well, it's just the, the level of concentration. There's very intense concentration flying an Airbus but for shorter periods of time. Depending how long that flight is, I might be able to go back and have a crew rest and maybe watch a movie and have a snooze. Uh, but on my shifts we're here with Forrest and on the buses, uh, I'm concentrating the whole time. You can't not concentrate, even for a second. I, it's all I can do to look down and see what time I'm due at the next bus stop, just, just like that. And that, I've, I've scared a few gutters. <laughs> yeah, I have. It must have been exciting for you. Very exciting. <laughs> I have a newfound respect for heavy vehicle drivers around Sydney, uh, which is quite challenging on some of the roads we have to use. So, Peter, you're the boss here. How many former airline crew do you have working here? Well, by the end of uh, November, I'll have 13. Word just spread between the little group of friends. Mm -hmm. And from one to one to one to one to one, they're all here. So what's special about the long haul guys? Well, it just means I won't be back in the air for a while, so it means I, <laughs> <laughs> it means I, I get to... I think he just capitalised on you. <laughs> it means I get to keep them for a bit longer. I think we're very lucky to have what we've got to have a reason to get up and go to work and provide for the family and things like that. That's great for our mental health. There's plenty of plenty of Qantas people and 
plenty of people in the community that haven't got anything as yet. So what does your family make of your switch? <laughs> Well, my junior daughter is studying at Macquarie University, so she's dying to get on the 197 out of Ingleside. <laughs> so she can <laughs> sit there and the go front. with that at the front and she can <laughs> drop off at uni. I think my wife's happy to have me out of the house. It's only so much gardening can be done. I don't like gardening. It's good, I suppose, in a way to be able to set an example for your kids. And, you know, it, it's somewhat about resilience, I suppose. I always thought that when I retired, driving the buses around with a few school kids on a run, you know, learn their names, I think that could be very pleasant. I just never thought it would come so soon. You know, I like machines. <laughs> I do. Have you had to take a bit of a pay cut? Oh, just a little. Is that tough? Oh, look, we've readjusted our priorities and we've possibly readjusted what retirement might mean to us. So do you think you'll fly again? Yep. But I have to take this opportunity and run with it. I am enjoying bus driving. Morning. I mean, if you enjoy your work, you don't actually work, do you? True. Yeah, I will look forward to getting back on an aeroplane, but um, at the moment, I'm making the most of what I've got. We'll see what happens in the future. And when I do formally retire completely from Qantas, hopefully I can come back here. <laughs> <laughs> what a fantastic story that is. I mean, th those guys r driving your bus, you'd feel pretty comfortable because when you get on a big plane overseas and they go, oh, it's Captain John Smith here, we're going back to Sydney. Put your seatbelt on. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Interesting about the, talking about purpose. You need yeah. purpose. It's that even though it's doing a different job, there's a reason to get up and there's a purpose. It's interesting because my, my first thought was the loss of status. Yeah. Because it's a very high status profession. For, but that's not, they didn't talk about no. that. No. Yeah. Mm. So the purpose is really strong. Really. Absolutely. Well, yeah. hopefully some good news for them soon and they can get back in the air. That would but be great. for now, great story. Thanks so much, Lise. It's time for a break now. Lots more of the projects still to come. Stay with us.